Hi there everybody. For today's lecture we want to complement our managing switch interfaces with part 2. This time we want to interact with port security configurations. As you know that port security is a mechanism that help you to prevent unauthorized access to your networks at access level especially. With port security you configured MAC addresses, authorized MAC addresses for your switch ports and ask switches to do not allow unauthorized MAC addresses to connect to the network. You know the port security configurations from CCNA. We just want to review this here. But as CCMP concept, so first we configure port security, then we configure recover from port security automatically. This could be a CCMP related topic. After that, we violate port security and then we verify our configuration. Let's do our today's mission. For today's lecture, I want to use IOU devices, especially an IOU switch. If you are not familiar with IOU devices and how to emulate them in GNS3, you could refer to my course Cisco Labs with Advanced GNS3 Features and refer to lecture number 2, Emulate Cisco Routers and Switches with IOU. So I select an IOU switch, put it here, start it, and put two VPCs, VPC1 and VPC2. I connect to my IOU device and now I go to global configuration mode and choose an interface. For example, interface ET0 slash zero. To use port security, first you have to get out the interface from dynamic trunking protocol or DTP by issuing the command switch port mode access. So switch port mode access is a prerequisite for configuring port security. To enable port security, you know that you have to issue the command switch port port security. With this configuration, now port security is enabled on our interface. Then we have some optional commands. For example, switch port port security maximum. This lets you to specify the maximum MAC addresses that are authorized to use this interface. If you don't issue this command by default only one MAC address is allowed to connect via this interface. So we leave it default. The next command is switch port port security violation and you could specify the violation type protect restrict shutdown. You know the differences between these three modes from CCNA. You know that the most aggressive one is shutdown and it is default and if you don't specify this option on your interface the switch will shut down the interface if port security is violated. So we leave it default too. Now we want to configure our MAC address. This is not optional. You have to configure it. With switch port port security MAC address. But here you have two options. First option is to specify the MAC address yourself. If you have a network with 10, 20 or maybe 100 devices, specifying the MAC addresses maybe could be easy for you and you could specify all MAC addresses manually. But in a large network it's very very hard and I myself um, never advise network administrator to waste his time with uh, configuring MAC addresses one by one in a large network. So what could we do? We could assume that when we want to configure port security for the first time in our network, all MAC addresses are authorized and we trust all of our computers. In this way, we use sticky. With the keyword sticky, when a computer connect to this interface, the first ones based on the maximum parameter that you've configured. If you configure maximum one, the first MAC address. If you configure, for example, maximum two, two first MAC addresses are learned automatically by the switch and the switch automatically add a command like this, switch port, port security, MAC address, a sticky and the MAC address of the computer in your configurations. So I use it too. 
and say switchboard port security MAC address sticky. Now I want to connect my first device to the switch and switch will learn this MAC address automatically and put it in authorized access. I start my VPC. Now device is connected. The switch learns the MAC address and put it in trusts. And now if I issue the command show running config, you will see that switch automatically adds this command to the interface command mode. This is the MAC address of my first VPC. Now I want to violate port security in my scenario. So I disconnect this connection and connect the other one. In this way, port security is violated and you will see some errors here. Port security, p-secure violation, security violation occurred and interface ethernet 0 slash 0. The MAC addresses which violate is you see that there is a difference between this MAC address and this MAC address. The last number is different. And now if we want to have some troubleshooting commands, we could use for example show interfaces ethernet Oh, sorry, ET0 zero slash zero in IOU devices. You see that the interface is going to down, down state with error disable. Or you could use show port security. You see that ET0 zero slash zero is enabled and the violation action is that. But this column is the most important one for us now because we have one security violation count. Or you could use show interface as a status command status command you see that et0 slash 0 is error disabled or you could complete your show interface as a status command with error disabled status this will show you the interfaces that are error disabled by any cause now if we want to recover our situation and if we want to get back our real device and it could work you have to shut down manually the interface let me disconnect this and go to the interface interface et0 slash 0 and say shut down to administratively shut down the interface and again get it out from shutdown by no shutdown and again connect the authorized device and now if we issue the show commands again you will see that everything get back to normal states show interface as a status you see that et0 slash 0 is connected and everything is okay but if you want to recover these situations security perspectives tells us to pursue these situations and ask the users why this happened for example a user may bring his own device his laptop to the network and try to connect it and it is unauthorized from our security policies and uh, we want to pursue these situations and try to solve the problems but for a large network this may be very very uh, hard work and we want to recover these situations periodically and if for example a device goes to error disabled mode for any causes uh, it recovers from error disabled automatically for example after three minutes four minutes or any times that security policy determine it to do that and define a recovery time we have to use the command error disable recovery cause and if i put the question mark here you will see that there are situations that you could define the error disabled recovery if the error disabled situation is caused by ARP inspection or caused by BPDU guard or caused by channel misconfig in Steepy or any other causes you see that you could define for each of these causes or select all to have the same action for all error disabled states for our scenario I use error disable recovery cause p secure violation is for us and now we have to define the time so we issue the command error disable recovery cause 
and sorry recovery interval interval and specify the interval in terms of seconds 30 seconds until 86,300 I put it for example 30 seconds again at least for me GNS3 did not react to this command for me and did not uh, recover from error disabled that is caused from a port security violation you could check it with your own version and send feedbacks to me let's wrap up our today's scenario for today we configure port security with the switch port port security with different parameters you see that and we configure recovery from port security we violate port security and verify our configurations with different show comments i hope this lecture helps you to improve your knowledge and see you in the next lectures